Hello, uh, welcome to my channel, and this is my inaugural video, so thank you very much for being here. My name is Edward, and uh, about seven or eight months ago, I discovered a passion for reading nonfiction and uh, philosophy books, and I wanted to learn about the origins of human society and the evolution of our thinking on some of the big questions that we have. And I wanted this journey to start where all journeys must start, the beginning. That's where uh, guns, germs, and steel come into play. This book is absolutely foundational for any kind of an understanding on the evolution of human societies. Um, it traces back to the very beginning and looks to answer the question, why did some societies succeed and, and win out? Why did the western world become so dominant and why did other ones why is that not the case for other ones um so some context on joe diamond before we go forward uh, i think it's really important to always kind of think about where your author is coming from what's their academic background what is their their frame of thinking about the world and in the case of joe diamond he uh He's a trained anthropologist, professional, I think he got a PhD in anthropology. He's, uh, he's a historian and a focus on evolutionary biology, which uh, I, I really appreciate that kind of grounding in science. That's also one of the things that kind of makes this book uh, challenging because it's very academic and at parts dry. And I, and I don't want to say that in a bad way. It, it's great. I want that foundation, um, but be prepared for that though. One of the consequences of Joe Diamond's kind of background in science is he has a very analytical framework for approaching these questions, which is something I really appreciate. And, and in my desire to understand some of these questions, I wanted to start with that kind of analytical framework. And he uses a, a system of like approximate and ultimate causes and this idea that like there are lots of little things that play into why some societies succeed and some don't and then there are ultimate things like a, like a tsunami or like you know the, the straw that broke the camel's back what, what was the defining thing right within that he looks a lot at the, um, the time and onset of food production being a very key determinant and the barriers to diffusion of technology. So like what parts of the world were easier for, um, for technology about agriculture and food processing technology to kind of spread and what parts of the world geographically made that more difficult. He also talks a lot about the importance of uh, population size. There's kind of a snowball effect in early societies where you have to uh, you have to build larger and more complex societies in order to sustain ever growing population sizes, which I think is is so so important in understanding that early agricultural revolution and and the role that that played in the development of, of society and how it kind of developed around the need to create agricultural societies. Uh, one of the interesting tidbits I, I remember is just like the earliest form of writing that we have is clay tablets, I'm pretty sure out of Sumeria, um, talking about food, like who owes what food or, or counting food. And so, you know, you can see this link between a need for writing as an evolutionary and social tool and the origins of farming. I, I just think that's such a such a fascinating kind of link. Um, I don't want to give up uh, or, or give away <laughs> too much about this book because I, I really want you to read it. If, if you can't tell, I absolutely recommend this for anybody who is interested in studying the development of uh, pre-modern civilization. Um, but another component I wanted to get into just, just to dispel any, any notions of, of justification of colonialism.
and he does a really key thing that he touches on throughout his book that this is not a a justification for the barbaric and, and immoral ways in which the western world subjugated the rest of of humanity and and that's just just a really it's not that it's not written in that framework it's not written from that point of view um and and there is some of that out in the world today and and i want to make sure that it's clear that this is not that uh so <laughs> would i recommend this i already said yes absolutely um anybody who is is just interested in in civilization and society and how humans have figured out how to live and how that interplays with the environment around them. Um, if, if that sounds at all interesting to you, read this book. Mm -hmm. So Diamond has written several other books. Um, this one and then another one I have right over here, Collapse, which I recently finished, um, looks at how societies throughout history or, or civilizations have, have collapsed and why that is. A very similar framework or scientific framework to, to Guns, Germs, and Steel. However, this is not about that. Uh, I will do a review on, on collapse at a later point in time for sure. It's, a, it's another masterpiece of Jared Diamond's. Um, but just to, to sum up this review, like this is a, a foundational text for understanding human civilization and how we got to where we are now. Uh, and, and I could not recommend